Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to create a 2.5D character in Unity. This is the way that works for me, so hopefully it'll work for you. First thing I'm going to do is in Unity Hub, I'm going to go to New Project. I will just choose a standard 3D project, and I will name mine 2. Wait. 5. D tutorial and I'm just going to change where I'm saving this so I'll just put it in the tutorial projects folder that will be fine and I am going to change to the 2022.3.2 F1 long term support version of the editor. I haven't used this version yet, so hopefully this method will still work. Um, but once you do that, I'm just going to hit create project and it'll create the project and open it for me. All right, now that I have my project, I am just gonna add a few things through the package manager. So I'll go to my package manager tab, go to the Unity registry, and I'm gonna be using uh, the universal render pipeline, as well as these uh, 2D sprite uh, packages. So I will first import this Duty Sprite package. I am also going to install the 2D animation package. And then I will go ahead and add the Universal Render Pipeline package. So let's Universal RP. I will install that as well. All right, I'm gonna go back to the uh, scene view here. I don't know why it's all dark. Maybe that's just my lighting settings, but whatever. Um, hmm. All right, well, I'm gonna go over to my project folder. I will create a new folder. I'm gonna call it rendering. And inside this folder, I'm gonna right click, go to create rendering and I'm going to want a URP asset with universal renderer. That'll create these two uh, pipeline assets here. And in here you can control all the uh, settings for how you want things rendered. So now that we have that, we're going to go over to project settings, graphics, and I'm going to drag and drop one of these two into this uh, render pipeline asset field. Now hit continue. And now we should be rendering in the universal render pipeline. And in my sample scene, I am just going to go ahead and make a plane just so we have a, a ground that we can look at. And I will create what will be our player object. And I am just going to zero this out. Same thing for the plane. Then underneath the player, I will add a 2D sprite where. And I'm just going to name that game object child object sprite and you can see here we got just a plain old white square and to make it a little more interesting I am going to use one of my pre-made assets that I made for a game I'm working on that also uses two and a half D so I just drag 
drag my uh, player art here. So I'm going to change my uh, player art texture to a sprite 2D with multiple sprites. I believe it is 32 pixels per unit. I'm going to set compression to none and filter mode to point, no filter. These uh, bottom two options, I set those for pixel art specifically, because if you don't, then the colors will blend and not look right. I'll hit apply. Now I'll go into the sprite editor, go to slice, and I can go by size. It should be 32 by 32. I want the pivot to be at the bottom, so the, uh, the player's movement and uh, scaling and everything will be based on the bottom of the image. So if I slice that, you can see the pivot is at the base of the player. I will hit apply. And I will save that. <clears throat> so now on our player sprite, I can change this to be one of those sprites that I brought in. So I'll just choose this. And you can see zero that out. And now you can see the uh, the player is standing on the uh, platform, and it is uh, technically two and a half D. The player's flat in a three D world, uh, but it doesn't really look all that great. And one thing I do to uh, make it look a little more convincing is in on the sprite object with the sprite renderer i will go up here to debug and you can see an option here for casting shadows for the sprite renderer that is turned off by default and if you go into debug mode you can turn that on so then the uh the object should be uh, casting shadows if the material allows it the material I have on it right now does not, so it is not casting a shadow. So I will go back to the normal mode. And in our project folder, I will right click, go to create folder. And I'm just going to call this uh, shaders. And we're going to create a material that allow our player to cast a shadow. So I will right click, go to create shader graph URP because we're using the universal render pipeline. And I will choose a lit shader graph. And I'll just call this sprite shader. If I double click that, it will open up a shader graph. So I will add a texture 2D here and I want to call this main text. And the reference here is going to be underscore main text. I'll just drag that out, hook it up to a sample texture node and a graph settings I also want this to be transparent that way the uh, alpha can come through I will feed our RGBA node into the base color and alpha into the alpha I will save that and going back here I'll right click on our shader object in our project folder go to create and material And let's go back to our scene view and I'm just going to drag it onto our player. You can see now it is casting a shadow. However, the shadow is not really great and there's like a weird cookie cutter looking thing around the uh, player. So I'm going to go back in here and see if I can figure that out. I do recommend turning on both for the render face. It's a little more... Uh, costly to do so but if you have it on both then when you go in here and you look at the back of your shader or at the back of your sprite uh, it's not gonna disappear on you so you can see it from all angles 
Okay, so I just figured it out. At least I believe I did. Um, so instead of transparent, I'm gonna change it back to opaque. And then I'm gonna choose alpha clipping here. And uh, then you can just feed your alpha into the alpha slot again. And the clip threshold is right here. So anything that would register as below 0.5 for a pixel in your texture is going to be clipped out. So I will just save this, go back to our scene view. And now you have a more accurate ish shadow. We can play with the render settings, make that a little better. Uh, but you also don't have the, uh, the weird cookie cutter shape around your player. So let's get the shadow looking better. I'm going to go into our rendering settings for our universal render pipeline. And I am going to just max out this cascade count. And you can see the shadow is now in the shape of our player. That looks pretty good. I will save our scene. So one advantage of doing it this way is you still use the sprite renderer, which is good for animations. So if I went to our player and I added an animator and I go to the animation uh, tab, I can create an animation here, make a new folder for animations. I'll just call it player walk for the animation. And I will hit record here, go to our sprite object, and I can always just change the sprite like you normally would for any 2D game. And it should just work. So I'll make a little walking animation here. And if I play this, yep, the sprite's just walking, the shadow's updating, and it is in three dimensions with the, uh, the flat character. So what people would call two and a half D. That is about as in depth as I want to go for this video. Um, if you want to see more or learn more things about this uh, two and a half D implementation or tricks you can do, or you, if you just have any questions, leave a comment down below. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.